Welcome to Fringa Tech Lab. This is a free course by the YouTube algorithm. Please comment, like, share and subscribe to the channel in helping to create more of these kind of tutorials. Just sit back, relax and enjoy the training. Let's dive in into the tutorial. Now let's quickly move on to the word processing application itself. We've learned a lot about how to launch some of these applications when we were uh, learning on the Windows um, interface. So to go by this one also, we quickly have to go to the start. We have our start. What do we want? We need Microsoft Word. And where can we locate in this Microsoft Word? Microsoft Word application can be located under the Microsoft um, Office Suite folder. So you move your the scroll box to where you will locate the Microsoft Office. So we have Microsoft Office 2013. We have different different um, versions of the Office. We have the 2019 now. We also have uh, 2021 also available. 2016 is available. Uh, the one that you think is to be okay for you to use, you can go ahead and use them. Just that the current ones are having additional features attached to them. So this is the folder for Microsoft um, Office Suite. So what I need, I need Microsoft Word application. You click on the drop down arrow to deploy all the Office Suite that is within this folder. So what I'm looking for is Microsoft Word, MS Word. So it needs Word 2013. This is what I want. So we just click on it. When you click on it, you are going to see this interface. These are previous work that has been opened already. You can see what you want to open there for the uh, template document that we have here. Anytime that you want to design something that you don't know how it goes about, especially like you, you want to do design like a letters, the type of letter that you want, either memos or application letters and those things or reports and you don't know how the format is, that is where you go with the template. It's already been designed, so you have to do changes and see how it is just to guide you to be able to perform that task that you want. But when you come to the blank document, the blank document is um, where you are going to do the, the whole thing yourself, meaning you know what you want to do and you know how to go about it. So you don't need to go and take anything like the template document or those stuff that they are. So you can see we have a lot of them. So when you check, um, let's say read and uh, that is a uh, black report. We have different, different uh, timeless letters. So a lot. You can go through, just click on them to see how they are. But what we want to do with today is the blank document. We want to design everything ourselves. We don't want to go by the uh, template. Then we have, if you want to, log into the office suit and get some more, more of the templates you can do that here also uh, previous works that have been opened down for us so you can see the logo of our ms uh, word now what you need to do is you just click on the blank document that is what you need as soon as you click on your blank document it take you straight to our microsoft word application interface now, we've learned a lot under Windows. As I told you, that when you get into those advanced applications, you're going to see the same thing. You can see that here also, we have our title bar. So what are, what are we dealing with? That is what document three, which is Word. So the title bar is giving you a name of what you are dealing with. And our Windows control is also there. Always the Windows control is here for us. In our standard toolbar, we have some shortcut tools also that is here. Uh, that is um, the save button. Then our do and the redo, they are also here. Our title bar is here. The windows control. The custom mark is always for help. As I told you, the, the custom mark is to give you help about any application that you want to learn. If you don't know how to go about it, it will give you a guideline how to go the step by step of. Uh, performing that particular task. Now, when we move from there, we have our main bar. This is the main. So the, the main is that the bar that is having a lot of ratings on them. 
And when you talk about the main, main, you know, it has different kind of subtopics, options under each of them. So each of the ones that we are going to get there on this menu bar, they have another sub things which command that you need to apply to affect or to help you in your the course of designing or working with your document. Now we have our file which is here. When you click on it, it will take you to the sub menu things that is under which, which we'll be talking about some of these things later. So I just wanted to see the views of them. So when you click you get what is over there. Now we also have um the menu bar which of them each of them is having um an information under them. Each tab of the menu which is, we have um the insert we have the home you can see if I minimize everything is still how it was. So we have what the home and under the home we have what we call ribbon. This ribbon is what we deploy for us to see the things that is there. The previous version of um word also when you click on the menu is to deploy them in a the form of what um word for you guys in the written. But this that the advanced ones are more mm, in uh, symbols or tools. So any time that you want anything on your home, when you click on it, the home is going to deploy. And what it has displayed for you is what we call the ribbon. That is the we call it a home ribbon. So you can see on the home, these are all things that is on the home. So we call it home ribbon. When I get to insert, the insert also is having its own. So these are the insert ribbon. So this is the insert ribbon, and under the ribbon that we have here, we have a lot of things that is under it. So you can see what is under home is different from what is under insert. When you come to design, design also is having different features under them. So with the design ribbon, we have different kind of shape, different kind of information that are there, which you will be using in the course of designing your document. When you come to layout, layout is also have a different uh, information under its ribbon. So we come to the reference ribbon. That one also is having different formations under it. When you come to mail, mail is also having different things under it. That's how it's continuing. And there are some applications that we'll be dealing with that it will be adding another menu to it. So we take note of that. There's not all the menus that you'll be seeing. There will be additional well, especially when you're dealing with shapes, you're dealing with objects and those things, it will be adding, for example, like formats and design and those things attached to. So we take note of that. We are not going to see only this um, menus alone that is here. There will be additional uh, menus when you are dealing with some of the application or some of these kind of uh, shapes under Microsoft Word. So we shall be going through all those things as well. Now let's see how these things are being divided under home. We have what the clipboard is. What the clipboard is, you can see we have our copy, cut and paste. That is also here what we went through in um, Windows and also paint. Those things are all here. Then when you come to front, there is a this a front. All this information, this the this line is dividing the paragraph and the front. So you can see where the clipboard is. This line is also, the line here is also dividing that side. So you can see there is a line here, which is the border for, that is in between the front and the paragraph. So you have to take note of the thing that is under front. All these things that are here, they are all under front. And when it comes to paragraph, paragraph is also from here to here. See the line. So all these things are under paragraph. When it comes to style, the style of written, these things are all under what style. So you can see it's also in here. Then we have kind of that is editing shape that's also in here. So anytime that you meet any of these kind of um, ribbons, you are going to see that kind of divisions. So it's telling you that this particular thing from here to here is under this group and from here to here is under this group. This from here to here also is under this group. So whatever that you want to do, 
you can get all these things, they are all in a paragraph. All these things are under what? Uh, fonts. So we take note of that. We shall be delving more into this, into details, so that you will see how they work. So now that we know of the menu and the ribbon, that is the home ribbon, the insert ribbon, the uh, design ribbon, page layout ribbon, these are the words and the terms, the names that you will be using. So we take note of that. That is what we call them home ribbon, uh, page layout ribbon in that order. So as I'm talking about this, um, the ribbons, there are other things that we need to go through. The two we've learned about um, this scroll bars, which is the scroll bar, the vertical scroll bar, and the, um, the scroll box, and the buttons as well. So we have different demarcations for each of these um, subtopics. Then also when we come down, we have our status bar. The status bar is to give information about what you have on your workspace, which is the, the page that we have here. So you can see our cursor blinking. As soon as you see the cursor blinking, it's ready to accept any text that you type or you or any key that you press on the keyboard is going to appear for you. So meaning the cursor is ready. There are some um, bars that I need to talk about also, uh, which is the rule bar is not showing yet. So any time that any of the bars are not showing, just come to the view because it's supposed to be under view. We have the ruler. Good, that's what I need. This is the rule bar. Mostly, we have it at the top and we have it at the right side also. You can see now it's showing here. So that's what we call is the um, horizontal rule bar and the vertical rule bar. What is the work of the uh, horizontal and the vertical rule bar? The vertical and the horizontal rule bar are to guide you where you are to start the work from. It's to guide you or to guide where the cursor is supposed to start the typing from and where it's supposed to end. So you can see where these our tabs, these tabs are. So you can see that we have what the hanging indent and the left indent. So this one, your cursor is going to what, be in line with that. Meaning this place is going to be for the margin. In the margin, you don't need to type anything here. And when you look at it, this blue space is always going to be for the margin. And then your typing is supposed to start from where the white is. So you can see this line and this line where they meet. That is where the cursor is. So whatever that is going to be outside, there is going to be the margin for us. So this, the horizontal ruba then we have our vertical ruba which is supposed to be now when you go to the down here yeah, also when you are typing and you get to the end this way is supposed to end it will not get to this side because this place is going to be for the margin so when as soon as you get to the end here the cursor will drop to the down by itself when you come to the down also we have where you are to type to when you get to the end here this is the end of where your typing has to end so somewhere here when you get to that side it has to drop to the next page that is how microsoft word operates so these rulers are to guide you where you are to start your work from and where you are to end your work from so when you get to a place where you are typing and your cursor just drop to the next slide don't be confused that there is a space and this because you are not able to type with the mini that place have been provided for what the margin so take note of that now let's move on to our practical creating of the document. When we are talking about creating a document, um, unless our workspace either is ready for us, we creating a document is by typing anything on our workspace. When you type a sentence in the workspace, that is a document that you create. So let me just have a case of the thing. Um, the boy is going to when I press enter to take me to the next line.
this is a document. So I can decide to save this as a document. Anything that I put, a design I put on it, either an image or text, whatever it is, they are all document. So you take note of that. So if you say you have to create a document, you have to create a document. This is how it goes about. So I'm going to add additional documents. For us not to consume more time, I'll just type it quickly. Then I'll add it to um, what we have here so that we can use it to design or to do the rest of our work. So this is an example of um, documents that I just created. I just created. So what we are going to do, we are going to use these examples to create a document as I said, just type in it in Word to give you the opportunity. And when it gets to the end, when it gets to the end where the rule bar is, we drop to the next line. Unless, as you are typing, you decide that you want to end here and move to the next line. That's where you press the enter key. That is how it works. Yeah. Learn how to use the keyboard. So we should be able to type to provide spaces in between the letters or any word that you want to provide there. So when you type a sentence, you should know that you have to provide the exactly space in between those words. So um, this, if like I want to type this, this uh, rough work, you should know that you have to provide space in between those words. So this is an example. So I just have something here that we'll be using. I just created a, a, a document that we are going to use for our editing or we'll be using to do our formatting of text. So this is an example of document. When you talk about document, you just create a type of something or either an image or text numbers and all this and they are all document. So now quickly, we want to format this text. When you want to format, when you talk about formatting, in uh, Windows, as we're learning about selecting or uh, moving of Windows, dragging and all those things, we've learned about something that we call select. If you want to work on any of the text or word that is here, you need to select them because the computer doesn't know which of them that you want to apply that command to. So we have a lot of text on the working space. You have to tell the computer, I want to work on this. I want to work on this. And the computer knows that oh, this is the particular one um, you want to deal with. So without you not selecting it, the computer will not be able to apply that command for you. So what we are going to do here, let me just put the heading. What we want to do now is formatting what? Formatting text. We are doing so. I'm just putting this thing as I'm heading. So, format we are going to apply these changes to this. Now, what do I do? I need to select or highlight in Word. We have what was select or highlight. It's similar thing if you highlight it to apply and highlight around the word or the letter for you. Select also when you have object and you click on it, and those um, the active or the select options are showing. That is what called select. So we'll be dealing with all those things as we continue from the subsequent topics that we'll be talking about. So to highlight, you send your mouse pointer to the back of the last letter. You click, you hold the left mouse button, then you move it, drag it around the letter or maybe a word. If you want it to be putting a word, you can put it on the word. If you want to highlight all the sentence you just want to click and drag from the back then you drag it around the whole thing and the way we select those files and folders is the same thing if i want only a letter then you have to click and drag around only that first letter when the shade is on then you release your hand from the button so meaning i highlighted a letter so take note there's a difference between a letter and a word a word this one is a word from here to the Invitation is a word, the two is a word, 
Kahila is a word. 2021 is also a, a word. But when you are talking about a letter, that means A is a letter, B is a letter, I is a letter. So we take note of their differences. So how to highlight? Try your hands on this. Always about the most practice. So you just click from the back. You can see my eye beam. And the cursor is blinking at the back of um, the invitation. That's the, where the, the eye is. Just send your mouse pointer to the back of where the eye is. You see the cursor blinking. Click. Then you drag around those words that you want to highlight. So this is what we call highlighting. In which we highlight those words or those sentences. Another way also of highlighting is you can put a mouse pointer at the back. You can see the the mouse pointer has changed to an arrow, which is when the eye beam is within the working space, it changes as what eye. But when it gets into the margin, this place always the margin. So you can see the margin space. When it's in the margin, the arrow change to the eye beam change to an arrow. So what happened? The eye beam change to an arrow. What happened is that you you just put the mouse pointer at the back, click. And to highlight that whole row for you. That is when you want to deal with a row. The same thing apply. If I want to highlight all this, I can put it at the back of it. Click and drag to highlight all of them. But what about if I don't need all of them? That is where you have to make sure that you learn how to highlight a letter, a word. Just send your mouse pointer to where you want it to be. Click and drag to highlight it. Kahila 2021, you just highlight it. That's how we do it. Because you'll be dealing with letters and words. So if you try to use this easy way of highlighting, how are you going to select those single letters and also those words? So take note of that. Well, we shall be using this highlight here. So please try hard and do more practice on this so that you'll be good to use or you'll be good to go anytime you want to do anything about this highlighting stuff or you want to select uh, any objects or any word. Now, what we are going to do now, we want to format text. And when we are talking about formatting text, we all know that the formatting, that is making the text appear with appearance, making it attractive, that is the formatting. So things that we can do to apply to it to make it a nice document or an, a, a nice appearance of appearance or a nice document for us. That's what we call about what the formatting. So um, I want to apply some changes to this. So you highlight this in word any time that you are typing. We type from uh, the left to right. So yours is only make sure you do your typing finish after that. Then you come and do your for, formatting. After typing, you do your formatting and the editing. I explain what the editing is, what the formatting is at the beginning. So what we are going to do is we are going to start to apply using those terms. Don't get yourself confused. We are going to do them one after the other to see their differences. So anytime that you want to type, type just relax, type your documents, wherever it appears, just as soon as your cursor starts clicking, just type. Type to the down. When you finish, you come and do your formatting. I can do the uh, editing. You can do the formatting and the editing once you are doing the typing, but that will take you more time. Rather, when you finish typing, you are going to do your editing, and that will take you to that will also reduce you consuming more time of working on that document. So after me type finish typing, I only highlight. I want to this heading is supposed to be at the middle. So if I want this heading to be at the middle, we come to where the paragraph is. Initially, when you are typing, you can see initially when you come, the cursor is at the left side. So the cursor is always at the left side of your document. We type from the left to right. So when you come down the paragraph, we have what we call left. That is the alignment. The left alignment or the alien left, we have the center, we have the uh, right, and we have the justify. So Initially, you, your typing starts from the left to right. You take note of that. So you don't mind where the cursor or the cursor is, where you are typing from. Finish with your typing. After that, you can apply the commands to them. So you only highlight 
come to the middle. If I want my heading should be at the middle, you just click on the center. It will position your heading at the center for you. You don't use the space bar to push the heading to the middle. That is a wrong practice. So always use the command, highlight it, then you use the center command, that is the center alignment to position your heading at the middle. If you want it to be at the right side, you just use the right to position it, especially when you are dealing with addresses and listings, the address that is at the right side, we use the right to do that. And if you want it to come back, you just click on the center. So you can see that I highlighted this particular sentence and the computer knows which or the computer has not known that which of them I'm dealing with. But if you don't highlight them, it will be difficult for your command to take effect. The command will only take effect when you are you start to what create different documents or you start to type. That's where those commands, especially the left and the right, will take effect. But if you want it to take effect on what you highlight or you want to deal with that you've already typed already just click on what highlight it and click on the others command and it will position it for you now we'll be coming to some of these tools i just want to talk about this one they come to the font also we have the font the font is where we have the types of ratings so if you need or you want to change the way you Written looks. We that's what we call the font type. We call it what we call font type. So the style of written. You will see when you click on the drop down arrow, each of these boxes you see a small arrow attached to them. This arrow is what you are use, you are to use to control that particular font box. So when you click on it, we have a lot of fonts. You can screw a lot of them. So the one that you prefer, when you click on it, you see that our invitation, the rating has changed over there. You just click on it, it's pop up over here for us. If you think that that one is not what you want, you can change it to this font. You can see the font that we have a different difference. So when you are talking about the font, that is the style of it. So you take note of that, the, the written type, that is the type that we are dealing with. We also have what we call the font size. When you are talking about the size, the size is the bigness of your text. Should it be small or should it be bigger? If you want your text to be big on the paper, you need to increase the size of it. There is a difference between the zooming and the size. So take note of that. We'll be learning about the zooming later. So you come to file. When you come to our uh, the size. We have 8, 9, 72. So you can select a size that is bigger for you. This size is okay. When you click on it, so the way you are seeing it, when you print on paper, you are going to see it exactly the way it's here. So take note of that. This is how we increase the font size. So this one, you call it what font. When I talk about the font, is the text. So the, the size of the text, that is what we are dealing with. So anytime you want, you can change it from here, reduce the size of it from the font size or increase it from here. Now, when you look at it, you have small letters. There is the, the upper case A with an arrow up, pointing up, and the small one with an arrow pointing down. The one with the arrow pointing up is to increase the font size for you. See, 22 is the one I click on it, it will go to 24. And I click it is increasing it and when I come to the one with the down is to reduce it I see the effect of it so that is the effect of um, what we have here this one increase and this one will decrease there is difference between these ones and this one so take note of them so we can see this one is after A with a small with the arrow this one is like two with a shadow so take note of their differences so that you not mix them now, from this side, we have what we call that is the font um, type and the font size. Now, let's go to the font style. These are the examples of the font style. We have um, the bold. How do you want it? I want it to be bolder. So, I said the bold make it, make it 
what strong or it make it thicker for you nice and bold it make the text appear well for you in a thick font that's what we call bold so if you don't want it again you can click on it again it will go off when you click in that command is active you will see that there will be a shade on it so there's a shade on it so what you do is you only click you see it changes always make sure that you highlight the text before you apply those changes the next one is the italic you see that is in the form of i when you click on it it will slide the text for you that is one of the stars you can see the two is active if you want to take it off just go and click on it again it will take it off for you you also have the u which is the underline anytime you want to underline your this thing your text you just go to the u you click on it it will what underline it if you want to take it off you just click on it again it will take it off for you so this is how we underline this is how we center our heading in the left right alignment then how to change the font type font size and the font style so we are going to learn how to um, change the color of um, this font i hope you find this tutorial helpful and see you in the next tutorial bye for now